Okay, I think we're working now. Uh, we're going to see how this, uh, this works out this evening. As someone pointed out on one of my other videos yesterday, um, sometimes my videos are a little hard to see. And I, I appreciate his feedback. Thank you very much, sir. I work nights, so when I'm at home, I'm either videotaping at night, and not I'm not a high-tech guy, so I don't have a whole lot of lights and stuff. I don't like a whole lot of lights and stuff because I've worked nights most of my adult life. So uh, I am going to try and increase the production value of some of these things so they're not quite as dark. Um, for tonight, I will be doing this from work. Um, and tonight's video, we're going to address two ways to fix not that this uh, we're going to address two ways to fix a suka we have two here with two slightly different problems now if you've watched any of my videos already on sword maintenance and sword care you've already kind of seen me talk about this a little bit we're going to go into it a little bit more in depth tonight so the issue we're having is that I don't know if you can see this or not. There is a big crack right here. You can see how big that is. My knife blade actually fits inside it. This one uh, is the same issue in more or less the same place, and it is even more pronounced. I can almost stick the whole thing inside it. So this is a pretty serious issue. Now, these come from, obviously, two different weapons, and they fit the weapons differently, so I've got to address the problems differently. Um, this one comes off of a 1060 Makoto, and the fit currently is not super loose, but it's loose enough that I really don't, you know, the thing where you do this and hit it, I really don't even need to do that to pull the suka off. Um, this one, on the other hand, cracked as it is, and in such poor condition, uh, fits extremely tightly on the blade. So this is it's the same issue, but I think a different cause. Um, I believe this one was just poor construction to begin with. I believe this one was a combination of uh, poor construction, and if, I, if you look at the wood here, you'll see that it's kind of springy. I think either that wood was a little bit green when they put it together, or they didn't bother cutting the tang properly and just forced it in there and busted the damn thing open. So this one I have to treat with a little bit more of a forgiving technique. Um, we're going to deal with this one first because it's pretty straightforward and a pretty normal fix. What you're going to need for this project is a little wood glue some kind of binding agent. I'm going to be using artificial sinew and I will go into why here in a few minutes. Uh, you're going to need something to stick down here to pour, sort of get the glue inside that crack. And for that we need my knife and this magazine. We're using this magazine because this front cover has a nice thick piece of cardstock so I don't have to worry about my paper getting all squishy and flip you know kind of wiggling around inside and putting glue where I don't want it I'll be able to cut one little strip of this off it'll be strong enough to put the glue in I can stick it inside the suka push it into the crack and pull it out done with it but before we get to that point we're going to need a binding agent now you can use tape, you can use string, you can use anything really. I'm going to be using artificial sinew for a reason. Artificial sinew is a heavily, heavily waxed cord. And so that way I'm not going to have to worry about ever taking it off. This is going to be a semi-permanent repair that I'm doing. Um, The interesting thing about artificial sinew, if you look at this, that is a pretty big piece of thread. And like I said, it's, it's, it's impacted with wax, so 
water's never going to destroy this. In fact, I, I've used this for sewing leather, and usually the leather rots before the stitching does. Now, the interesting thing about artificial sinew is it is actually four bits of string in one. And you can sort of peel this apart. There we go. We can break it into twos, and then you can break that down further into two more. Now, these are incredibly strong threads. Each one of these will hold about 50 pounds of weight. Okay. So, this is going to be ideal for what I want to do. And I'll explain that later as we go. Now, what we're going to do is we're just going to peel it apart because I'm not going to use the full size. And the reason I'm not going to use the full size is that once I glue it, I'm going to wrap the end of the suka in this thread, in this artificial sinew. And it will be hidden under this end cap. So I wanted, I need something strong. I need something that I can hide, something that I don't need a lot of to get the effect that I want. And for that instance, this is ideal for me. Um, again, like I said, if you wanted to, you could. Oh, that's the hold up. Okay. If you wanted to. You could use duct tape, just cover the inside of it with duct tape and be done with it. And that would work gorilla tape. The new stuff that that is just amazing stuff. Ah, baka. All right, well, I guess we're not going to do it the way I wanted to. I'm all bound up here. Fortunately, I think I've got enough right here. So, get rid of that. And get that out of my way. Hi, right, so this. All right, so now we're going to take this apart even more. And that should be more than enough. Now, uh, that right there for now, because I'll need that for the next one. To give you an idea, the size comparison. cleaner. Now that is full size. That is quartered. I don't know if I can get this to focus or not. You can see the size difference there. And we want the little one. So now that we have our string, we're going to set that right here with an easy access. Take my handy dandy piece of crap knife. This is my EDC knife. So it's not super sharp. It is just sharp enough to do everything that I need it to do. And I tend to hand this to other people when I'm working. And I've seen people cut themselves on somebody else's knife, and I don't want to be responsible for that. So, I'm trying to cut just a little sliver here, so I guess maybe I should have brought a sharper knife for this task. Maybe I'll send this one off to Eric. Have him sharpen it for me on his ever sharp or work sharp or whatever the hell that thing's called. His sander. It's really what it is. Part of the reason I don't understand that whole thing. It's a sander. You can buy a sander like that for half the price at Harbor Freight. The only difference is it doesn't apparently say work sharp. Um, all right, so this is what I'm after. What I'm going to do is take a little bit of wood glue and 
I don't need much for this, so I'm just going to put a little bit on here. You know what, if I need more, I'll take more. So there we go, just a little blob on the paper. And we're going to just run this through a good distance. And this is why I want this, because it stays fairly stiff. What I'm going to do is I'm going to try and stick it in the hole and then pull it down so that it'll touch the bottom side of the, uh, the wrap there and simply pull it out. Just like this. See how that's fitting in between the wood. All right, that easy. All right, now, now that I have the glue in there, I want to leave it kind of like this. And I'm going to have to start working on closing it together. So I'm going to grab my string. And the first thing we're going to do is just give it a couple of little wraps and start bringing that together like that. I don't know if you can see that or not. Now I'm just going to try and wrap this in one. Whoops. Ah, Baca. One layer. And with each wrap around, it will get a little bit tighter. But we're going to try and do this as tidily as possible. Now, now this artificial sinew I'm using, like I said, it's a heavily waxed thread and this stuff is super strong. Which is again part of the reason that I want to use it. All right, so I've got my wrap going. Now what I'm going to do is take this end and bring it around. And about the middle is fine, I guess. And I'm going to pull it down like that. And the next wrap is going to go on top sort of hold it in place and then I'm going to back up and go over two or three more times now you can see I don't know well enough well, if you can see it or not you can see that little white dot there. That's the glue being forced out. So that means I've got a nice good connection in there. Alright, now for the fun part. I'm going to have to do some sort of a knot. And for that I think what I'm going to do is just keep wrapping it down. almost to the edge and then from there I'll be able to take this one tuck it back like this so let me unwrap that I'm running out of string so let me unwind it two turns alright so I'm going to wrap that and leave a loop and then go back over it and come through the loop and wrap it around and come through the loop one more time And then we'll pull this one 
back. There we have it. Now this particular thing, if you, you, know, you tie your shoes, you know the first part is to wrap it around. Well, this is going to be wrap around, wrap around. And the reason for that is because when you're using waxed thread, that creates a better knot. So, here we go, wrap it around twice. Pull that tight. And knot it. I'm going to take my knife now. I don't want to leave too much, but I need to leave something. Wax thread, once you set fire to it, will kind of melt. It's a really neat thing, and I'll be able to press it in. But I don't smoke, so I don't carry a lighter with me. I don't have one. So there we have it. It's simply wrapped around a few layers, and that is all. The only thing that's for is to hold the wood together while the glue is drying. But because it is what it is the other nice thing about this is that it will reinforce the glue it will reinforce that and keep it from breaking a second time now i'm going to take the clean end of this and just kind of drag it in there to get any wayward little bits of glue out that might have popped out of that crack now the added bonus to this is that this piece will now fit a little better And this is an invisible repair. Done. So, that leads us to number two. Eh, this pain in the ass. Now I've kind of put this project off because of this. I will not need glue for this, so I'm going to up here and get rid of that and the reason I am not gluing this is because I suspect that part of the reason that this is broken is poor construction so what I'm afraid is going to happen is if I tighten this up too much then I may not be able to get it back on the sword which would be bad the other thing is if I glue it um, then it's going to dry in that position. You can see, I mean, watch how much that bunches up there. If I glue it, it may throw it off to the point where when I try to put it back on, it'll just break somewhere else. And we don't want that. So for this repair, we're just going to be using the artificial sinew. Same thing. We're just going to begin to wrap it and this will be another invisible repair and what we're going to try and do is with each wrap around here I don't know if you can see this or not you can see how how wide that crack is so what we're going to try and do is draw that in And every wrap around here is going to help do that. <laughs> now this is going to be a little bit of a problem because the fake race skin is poking down there a bit. I think because this is so messed up, what I'm going to need to do is start with a knot because it keeps, I can't keep the tension on it while I'm winding it and I need to keep a minimal amount of tension on it to start and it will tighten itself up as we go 
And because I am just a grand idiot, I have just managed to reverse everything. So that's all right, too. All right, so we're going to start with that. And you can see how much we gap. It's still a little better than it was. But now, as we tighten it up, we try and push this together a little bit. And every wrap around there is going to help make that tighter and tighter and tighter. Now the beauty of doing this this way instead of gluing it is that if it doesn't work I can always cut the cord off and nobody will be the wiser. All right. And also, because this is apparently going to be an incredible pain in my ass, I'm going to do two layers of cordage. So I've worked it forward, and you can see that all we've done is just slowly bring that crack together. And I'm going to make my loop. Actually, I probably don't even need my loop, but... Gonna go ahead and make my loop. And then start winding my way back up to where I started. loop tight really don't need to worry about that but what the hell All right now this is pretty tight it's drawn in pretty good and tie it off If you're worried about slightly offsetting that middle bit at the end, then I would suggest making your knot on either the top or the bottom of your suka. All right, now. That's done. Cut this off. Now again, I'm going to leave those little tips, and what I'll do later is I'll take a lighter and I'll melt those and I'll mash them down, and it will become a permanent knot once I do that. Now, the moment of truth. There we go. An invisible repair. So, um... There you go. Two ways to deal with a suka problem. That's it. Um, my next video, we will try putting these on. I promise I won't try it until then. We will find out together if I've done something really wrong and if I have to take this all apart. Thanks for watching, you guys. Have a great night.